I have spent about 20 years collecting clothes. So this is where I mainly get dressed. So I keep here how this kind of room works is what I've got on the rail is outfits that I make up. So if I have a couple of hours on a Sunday morning, my favorite kind of Sunday morning is Lila's still asleep, the house hasn't woken up, I go and do a Facebook Live and then I come here and I just try and put together some outfits for the week so that I don't then have to think about what I'm wearing. I've done that for 20 years. Like when I was filming my TV shows, I'd have to get together 40 outfits for each series and I had to buy the clothes myself. I didn't borrow clothes. I've got on here a mixture of stuff, but to give you an idea of something I, I held on to was this Prada coat, which Lila actually now loves. And the problem with my daughter is she suddenly always goes to expensive things, but not gonna be good with beige. But weirdly, when I bought it, it was a time when one wore a skinny jean and a jacket and a t-shirt. And it just makes me happy, this um, colour. And I sometimes, I might do it. I had a shirt from Victoria Beckham's downstairs, but I would then sometimes do a mixture of pattern and print in the same colour tones. Um, then, another thing. I was in Japan um, in February and I really got into kimonos. I bought quite a few in a market for £15 each, but I just thought they were beautiful. And what I'll do is I might wear them with a belt and because a kimono has a sort of lower line I'll probably put the belt in the front like that and have the belt go through the loop at the back um, and I was in the market I got off the plane I heard about this kimono vintage market and I went straight from my plane to that so I got that one and then I got it in a sort of lilac -y color which is really pretty this <laughs> I got at Zara in South Africa in the sale for about £10 and I'll wear that with these culottes underneath and kind of belted like that and then I'll probably do with it these Topshop shoes which kind of have the pink and the yellow so that's very matchy matchy but I sometimes love matchy matchy it's I'm a little bit anal and it just makes me feel the outfit is streamlined. What else? Yes, something I've just got, um, which is going to look dreadful with what I'm wearing. But I thought to myself, I love capes. I'm obsessed with capes. And I just saw on my Instagram a woman, a lot of my Instagram ladies know what I love. So if something comes in a store, they say, have you seen Trini? They've done another metallic top in H&M, so I'm off there. But um, somebody said to me, have you seen that Zara have done a denim cape? Yeah, I know. <laughs> so <laughs> I haven't even tried it on yet. And I'll probably wear it with a crop navy trouser um, and a wedge. But I'm just going to try it now and see. But I just thought that could be just super fab um, with a white t-shirt. Do you like that, Georgie? Would you do it? You're not sure. Um, I was in Stockholm recently and H&M Studio do a range and I got that dress and I think I'll wear that in the summer and it was in the sale too but I love that it's a very bold print for me so I looked at it and I thought do I see the print before I see me and that's the way I try and judge whether I can get away with it but I thought if I have a little bit of color on my face and perhaps I have quite a good blusher on I'd use Shusha from Trini London I wouldn't do a bright lip with it but I'd make sure I have an, a, the right amount of blusher because wearing orange can be tricky for me but I just couldn't resist it. Me and M is a range that I know, I'm sure people on Sheer Lux like it, but I, what I like about how they're made is that she thinks of everything. So she thinks of the length of the arms of people and she thinks of what, she loves the half tuck too. She's quite like me, Claire. So I saw this because we did a collaboration with them and on the day there was a model there wearing this and I just fell in love and I bought it and it's that top, which I don't wear at a half neck because I'm better and I fold it under because I got a very long neck, so I'm much better to have this or to have it around here. Trousers, which were too short for me, and whenever trousers are too short, I just take them down and I leave the double stitching at the bottom. Proportionally, I have quite a long body and short legs, but I try and wear clothes so that you think that my waist is higher and that the trouser doesn't tell you where my bottom actually ends, which is here. <laughs> so I do that. And then it came with a jacket as well. So I wear them all together. And it's 
one of my most comfortable outfits and it's a great day to night because then if I have the trousers with the top on, it kind of turns into a jumpsuit and then I can just take that off and I, I know I'll have it for years. I really love it. It's just a question of keeping it clean. So I saw this in COS and I loved it, but it has a weird sleeve on me, which I can't show you, but I'm not good. I'm not good in that, that length sleeve. And then I remembered when I was trying on the shop that I had this old Roxanda shirt. So I then thought, actually, that could work. So I bought it thinking I might take it back. And then I got home. I'm not going to give you the proper idea here, but you'll just get an idea. Um, and then I thought, if it's exactly the same color, it can look like it's a sleeve extension. So um, that's what I did. And it kind of then works, because then you have that sleeve. If it's a dress, I might just, you know, do that with it. But it just gives it a different look, and it makes it makes this cost dress more expensive because the more elaborate a sleeve is, generally the more expensive something is. So it just, it made it feel different. And I could either wear it with white trousers and wear it open as a kind of mad swoopy thing, which I tend to do, or I can do it up and belt it and wear it with a high platform as a dress. You like, when you're shopping, it's really important to think where that will find a place in your wardrobe. And I used to do a lot of impulse shopping. And now when I buy things, I really try and think, what will I wear it with? What relationship will it have with something else in my wardrobe? So that's always an important thing for me. I'm a sucker for a Zara bag. I have too many, I'm gonna take some back, but I bought about four or five, and I sort of loved that. Um, I felt the detail on it was good, and I like the size because I do have quite a lot of things, and even though I like these little bags, sometimes they're too small for me, so that will fit my phone, my makeup, my wallet, my sunglasses, my reading glasses. This, I did this mad coat i got it from asos and i haven't bought a print coat for years but i know over the years i've loved a print coat and i just thought the cut of this coat was beautiful it's very bad to show it now with a wide trouser but you can wear it done up like that or undone and just tie it at the back so that you open up that but it's really the most incredible fabric um okay then let's go over i i am a collector of coats and if I had to say I had an addiction, it would probably be a coat addiction. And I have got a few here, but my main coats are not here. But I'm just going to show you some ideas of things. So this is another old favorite, which is 20 years old. And, um, and I haven't worn it recently, but I feel I could never get rid of it. And it's a really, I did have a relationship with Prada that was a bit of a bad problem for a few years, but now I don't, now I have a startup, I can't really afford to buy anything from Prada. But this is a Prada from 16 years ago, I think, and I just found it incredibly beautiful detail, and it was sort of hankering back to the 70s, and when I wear it, I might actually wear this kind of shirt and a flared Victoria Beckham high-waisted jean, and it's just a beautiful cut, it's a wonderful suede, and my daughter will have it too. This I love. This is really old and capes are in and out, but I kind of feel they're permanent. And I just found it a very beautiful cape. Um, and I got this in Zara about eight years ago. And I kind of didn't see many people in it, but I just love the detail of the sort of Chanel fabric with the little um, Diamante there. And it's kept incredibly well and it has that raglan sleeve, so it hangs beautifully as a, as a cape. And I'll wear that usually. I'll probably wear that with like a high-waisted black trouser, or I had a char I have a charcoal grey flare tight with a flare and a shirt. This is a very old Jill Sander. It's a really classic fitted Crombie, but it's in the most beautiful colour. And I remember I bought this, and at the same I do remember everywhere I bought my clothes. And I bought that from Miu Miu, and I've worn them both to death. Cost per wear, they're probably about 50p. I, I will wear this. I, I haven't worn this for a year, but I wouldn't get rid of this because I do also think to myself that I probably won't spend expensive money again like I did in my 30s. And so whatever I've got, I want to know that it's so timeless that I could wear this in 20 years time. And when I make that decision, I look at, I have a few friends of mine who are women in their 60s and 70s. And I look at things which they say, oh, I've had it for 30 years, and I think, okay, that's why it's still working. And you kind of look at the point. So coats is something that can always do that. And dresses is something that can always do that. Jackets, I think, can't. Trousers, I think, 
genes are fine because genes I've seen every style of gene in my uh, in my years of growing up and if I kept every style of gene I'd never ever have to think I have to buy that style of gene again you've seen this actually but this is Vanessa Seward and it's a cape again and I saw this and I got it 70% off in the sale things like this I would never buy new because it would just be too much for me to justify but I know that I'll wear this, you know, I'll be Iris Apple in this, basically. Um, sequins also give me joy. <laughs> so I have got a sequin collection, um, which goes from that Mew Mew one to just little jackets that I bought that I love. So a jacket I bought um, that I actually seem to have two of here, because I think I was going to give one to my mum as well for Christmas, but I didn't in the end, so I might give it to her next year. But is this which is just a very beautiful cut, like that. Um, and it's a slightly Balmain cut of that very sharp shoulder pad. And I think because it has one button here, it gives you a very good waist. So you could wear it with a flare trouser, you could wear it with a skinny jean, and it works for boobs and non-boobs. So I, I, I did actually give this jacket to about four people um, for presents last year. Then I have things that are a bit mad, and I think to myself, will I seriously ever wear that? And I think, I, I saw it on this morning, because I go and do fashion on this morning um, a few times a month, and I just kind of fell in love with it, and I don't know if it has a permanent place in my wardrobe. <laughs> Probably doesn't. But, you know, to throw on an evening dress, um, I might throw it on an evening dress. In fact, I know exactly which evening dress I'm gonna throw it on summer. I have a yellow evening dress I gotta wear to a wedding, and I might put this on top. If I look at all these shirts here, probably 70% of them are Zara or Cos. And if I love a shape of a shirt, and it's a really good shirt, it becomes my uniform for that year. So this shirt costed about five years ago, and I bought three, um, and I literally rotated them every day. I remember when I was fundraising, I was always wearing the shirt, and I liked the bib. I liked the fact this was soft jersey, and it's... It's probably my most admired shirt. It might look sad on the hanger now, but it's so comfortable and it's that sharp poplin when you wear against structured tailoring just gives a very good definition to an outfit. Um, then I've got really old friends, which I would still keep this. This is a very old, Prada one year did a collection where they painted on um, in the collection and I had a coat in this as well, but I kept the shirt. It's incredibly fitted and I wear it with a very full skirt. But I feel that sleeve will always do me a good service because it's going to cover that bit when I'm feeling it. And I've sometimes worn a fluted white shirt underneath if I want to elongate it like I did earlier with that Roxander. So I have a sort of wardrobe that's my sort of very kind of what I call high summer wardrobe. And it's all the caftans. And I think a summer wardrobe, like a, when I say a beach summer wardrobe, is something where you know, I have friends in here that I have had for 20, 20 years <laughs> and they just kind of vary. So I've got, well, this is one that isn't so old. This is about eight years old. And this is by Nina Mahmood, who's a designer from India. And it came and a lot of clothes you buy in India because the lady's quite petite, they're really high waisted. So this bit was actually double length on the bottom. So it was an incredibly high waist. So what I did is I cut half of the bottom and I made um, a waist for myself, which was more in line with my waist because I just couldn't say no to the fabric and the textile. I thought it was so beautiful. And I wear this closed or I wear it open with a little you know, pair of jeans and t-shirt underneath. She made one in pink. <laughs> um, so I did the same with that too. And that had that on the bottom and I brought it up here and I, it's a bit tight actually for me now. I don't know how I'm going to retrieve that one, but I think that's something also Lila at some stage will love. And it's, that is just a permanent summer dress, you know, for ever. Cusper wear that I've worn more than any other thing in my wardrobe is this. And I wear this usually um, like that. These are actually these little marks here from a microphone because I work filming so much. A white jacket over and wear a pair of white trousers underneath. And then if I'm dressing it up, I'll wear Chanel um, necklaces and a white cape. And it was from Zara and it was 29 pounds. I have three of them. And I just love it. And whenever I don't know what to wear in the evening, in the summer, I'll put this on with the white trousers, a pair of trainers. And it's that kind of mixture of, 
incredibly comfortable but a bit of glamour and that's my favorite way to dress is not to be in a tottering heel I'm never somebody I'll show you in a minute my dress selection collection which I haven't gone into for about five years because I've stopped wearing dresses I much prefer to put on separates and layer this I this is such a sweet dress I got this I can actually wear this again I might wear it for a wedding this is a size 16 and it goes that way round so you look at that neckline size 16 straight dress but I turned it around and I put a tuck in here so I, I sewed that up because the fabric's very fluid and then I wear it and I wear it with this tiny bright yellow neon belt and it's one of my favorite dresses to wear like for a smart summer evening okay so this is so here this is all my caftans and I've had these caftans like that's 20 years old that's 10 years old and so they just stay there and some years I won't wear them and then I'll go somewhere where it's kind of you want a caftan in the evening and I'll wear it. So that's caftans. These are all Pareos and I've had them for so many years. One or two are new collections but they go from 20 years old to last year. And I did have many more and I culled it down and I have 10 and they generally go with all the bikinis I might wear. Down here are dresses that are kind of things that you put on become a dress so they're like a poncho that becomes something with a belt they're just pieces of fabric that's pajamas and white caftans and that's a few more caftans yes okay <laughs> i haven't worn nexus for years but i think nexus is something that never actually go out of fashion so this this is my favorite necklace of all time and it's from h and m and i wear it over white and whenever i'm tired i put this on over a white dress and it was £4.99 and that is probably, if I've lost that, I'm more upset than if I've lost some lovely Marnie necklace. I have very long arms, so if I wear a bracelet sleeve length, it's usually a bit higher. And I put these kimonos on and I didn't like the sleeve length until I then took sort of, you know, four bracelets in a sort of Diane of Reland inspired way. And I filled the gap between the end of that too short a bracelet sleeve jacket and my wrist and it gave some colour it brought nice textures to the slight texture on that kimono um, and in this side I have block colors <laughs> and in this side I have print <laughs> so um so there's certain things that and there's other things I won't give away actually I'm just going to this is a coat that I keep every year when I'm doing a curl or I'm thinking I'll sell my clothes I think I should sell and then I don't sell and I just can't bring myself selling it. It's the first thing that my husband ever bought me years ago, like Lila's father. And I think that Lila one day will love the connection of that and she'll want to wear it knowing that it was the thing that her dad bought her mum. So this Roxander dress. And this yellow dress had a very big sleeve and it was too big for me. And whenever I put it on, I didn't wear it. Um, because I felt the sleeve overpowered. It was like layers and layers of this. So what I did is I took one of them off and I, and it was also too high waisted. So whenever I wore it, I thought, thought, do I look like I'm pregnant? Because it was really here. So I did that same thing again and I found some fabric and I put that yellow fabric in. I think I actually took it off the bottom and put it on there so it fitted me properly. And this is, you know, this is the colour of my brand, so this does come out, this dress. <laughs> then there's dresses like this, which um, I won't get rid of. This is an old Saint Laurent, um, which is just kind of harks back to the days of, um, of Saint Laurent, when he was inspired by Dior. So I just love it. Uh, it's a little bit dirty, but I, I won't get rid of it. I don't know if I know if I can fit it, but I think one day, one day Lila will wear that. So I had, you know, I have really weird dresses from Prada that this is such a Prada moment and then everyone copied it. And it's that mixture of a sort of military fabric, military color with a bit of that sort of Madonna bustier moment. But I just feel it's a fab fun dress. These I loved and I did wear these dresses so often that I got this color and this color. And they're by Lanvin. And I used to wear them because I hated my knees. So I'd wear them with leggings underneath. I look back now and I think, well, was that a good moment or not? But I'll wear a legging just to cover my knee. And I wore them sometimes belted, which I would never do now, and sometimes open. But 
there's just, the fabric is incredible in these dresses and it's a real L'Envin moment this, even though, you know, the designs evolved over the years, I still feel it's a kind of classic L'Envin dress. I did collect for a while vintage clothing, so I collected a bit of Aussie Clark. Aussie was always too short for me, so I wear this and I wear it with sandals, but it's quite high-waisted, it sort of works. This I haven't worn yet, I don't know if I will. This is the second collection of Erdem, and I liked this dress, or third collection probably. Um, but I did the same again, because Erdem cut it quite high, so I found some blue fabric and I put it here. So I've slightly changed his design, but it just worked for me better when I had it on. And then it also was a little bit short and it managed to bring down the hem so that it would be just on the knee and not uh, interfere with the existing pattern too much. This is, I mean, I haven't ever worn this and I haven't got rid of it, but this is an old Fortuny cape and Fortuny was a beautiful fabric maker in the 30s and a lot of that sort of wonderful velvet pleating you see is Fortuny. And so I kind of got that and I, I thought, you know, I mean, I always put it on and I think one day, probably this might be when I'm 60, I'll wear a white crisp shirt and I'll have that like that with a big brooch wanting to cover my neck and um, a pair of black cigarette pants and a killer stiletto. This is one of my favorite things, it's so mad. But this is a hand-painted dress by Dodge Gabbana and they painted on a canvas. It was, a, again, it was in a sale, it was a size 14. I remember exactly when I bought it, but I just found it so unusual. And the fact that it's sort of the color, well, it's not the color of my skin, but it's as flesh colors as a dress will get. And the cut is so beautiful. I don't know if I'll ever wear it again, but I definitely couldn't get rid of it. But my favorite category would have to be over here. I'd say it's not this that is my favorite in terms of one thing, but the concept of sequins I love. When we feel our lowest, we want to hide away. But if you've got to go out, you need this kind of protective covering. So for me, it's putting on a good face of makeup, which is still me and not hiding too much behind. And putting on sequins so that I feel I'm, you know, I'm not hiding away, but I feel I need to I need to kind of make the most of that moment and that day and it helps me do it. Simple little thing. <laughs>